I'm Rhonda Crank, and this is Buttercup. She's an A2, A2 Jersey milk cow. And if you're not familiar with A1 or A2 milk, you can learn more about that on the Farmer's Lamp. <laughs> Buttercup uh, gives us three to four gallons of milk a day, or she produces three to four gallons of milk a day. And um, we can't use all of that. So we practice once a day milking. And once a day milking is what we want to talk to you about today. Before we start talking about once a day milking, our setup's a little different, so I want to talk to you about that for just a second. We drink raw milk. I strain it, I bring it in, I put it in sterilized glass jars, and I refrigerate it. Raw milk will last two to three weeks in the refrigerator, and if you can get it chilled to 40 degrees Fahrenheit or below within an hour, it can last up to four weeks. Now, I can't verify that with personal experience because it doesn't last at our home that long. If uh, some for some reason someone's gone or we don't use some milk, if I get too much in the refrigerator, I'll take the oldest milk and I will give it to the chickens or the pigs or the dogs or some to the barn cats. Um, just depends. But we grew up on raw milk. And so that's how our family drinks it. Now, if you prefer pasteurization or homogenization, even though it kills and changes proteins, vitamins, and micronutrients in milk, if that's what you choose for your family, you can certainly buy a pasteurizer or homogenizer for the home. They're very expensive, but that's an option for you if that's what you choose is best. Now, what is once a day milking? Well, that's exactly what it sounds like. Traditionally, milk cows are milked twice, once in the morning and once in the evening. After a cow gives birth, and her milk comes in, which is usually around seven to 10 days, they're milked twice a day. Now, even on homesteads, some people take their calves off within 24 hours to 48 hours. Uh, some take them off in a month, whatever they choose for their farm or their homestead. And then they give the calf a bottle. Sometimes they milk the cow and give the calf part of the mother's milk and sometimes they do milk replacers. We try to do as many things as possible in rhythm with nature so we let the calf have everything it wants for f the first four or five months of age and then we wean it if she hasn't already now a cow when a, when her calf is one to two months old a milk cow is bred again because it takes her nine months and during that nine months she will produce milk except for the last two months the last two months of a pregnancy a milk cow dries up and she starts storing up vitamins and nutrients for her colostrum and the milk for the new calf that she's about to give birth to. So that's why they they normally naturally wean them around eight to nine months. But our normal is we'll take the calf off around four months. I don't know if we'll wait the whole four months for this one for FP. He's half black Angus and he's a very large calf. And even though he's only three months old, I'm going to have to start milking twice a day because he's getting too much of the milk. He's already eating grass and eating hay, but when I go to milk her, he runs up there and gets everything he can. He's learned our routine, and so we're not getting what we need. So we're going to probably start weaning him early, and I'm going to go ahead and start twice a day milking. Once a calf is weaned, you will have to milk twice a day anyway. Only a very experienced a uh, very skilled dairy maid or dairyman can successfully do once a day milking without harming the cow's udder or her teeth. Now, why would someone want to do once a day milking? It's healthier for the calf. It's not raised on formula. So we want them to be as healthy as they possibly can be. We can't use three to four gallons of milk. Now, if you've got a large family, you very well might need three or four gallons of milk a day but we can't consume that so we want to have let the calf have it it's natural for him you don't have time to milk twice a day it's a very busy world and people have very busy lives so it's hard uh, for them to milk morning and evening you can milk in the evening instead of the morning if that works better for you the process is pretty much the same there's an old saying that I'm gonna share with you here that I really love. A cow has one udder and four teats. One teat for the farmer, one teat for the calf, one teat for all the other farm animals, and one teat to share. So I think that's very appropriate and uh, I like that. Now, how 
to do once a day milking. You have a couple of options here. You just have to choose which setup will work for you, for your homestead, for your barn, for your goals, for your family. Now, like I said, the first two weeks, or maybe I didn't say this yet. I'll say it here. The first two weeks allow the calf everything it wants. It's getting all the colostrum. Usually the cow's milk will come in day 10 to 14 unless they've had multiple calves. This is Buttercup's second calf. On day six, we went out to check on her and her bag was full and she was hurting. So we just milked her right there in the pasture uh, because he wasn't drinking as much. Her milk came in faster because he was her uh, second calf. The calf will drink one half to one gallon of milk a day the first few weeks. And then, of course, as it grows, it'll drink more and more. Like I just told you, FP is drinking most of the three to four gallons a day that Buttercup is producing. The colostrum will be in, in the milk for the first seven to ten days. And some people don't like the taste of that. Um, so if you have to, if they have to milk her, if her bag's too full and they have to milk her, they will give that to the animals or give it to the calf in a bottle. It has a weird taste, just so you know. It does have an unusual taste. To me, it's not undrinkable, but to the rest of my family, they won't touch it. So we let the calf have it. Um, if her milk comes in, another reason you may want to watch her very carefully, if her milk comes in and you don't catch it, she can very easily get mastitis. So you will want to start milking as soon as her milk comes in full. Also, if you don't milk her, she will reduce the production of her milk. Option number one. This is how we're doing it right now because, like I said, we don't need more than a gallon of milk a day for our family. We leave the cow and the calf together 24-7. In the morning, I bring her into the barn. I feed her. I milk her. And this, well, this is a great setup if you don't need a lot of milk. Now, FP has learned that when I take her in, I'm getting the milk. So he has started nursing her earlier, and I'm not getting as much. So I'm going to have to start twice a day milking. I've learned that dairy cows are very tooky about their schedules. She knows when I'm supposed to be up there. And I would say eight mornings out of ten, she is already there waiting for me. And the same thing in the evening. Because I will eventually have to milk her twice a day, I'm going ahead and at the time of day that I want to milk her in the evenings, I'm giving her her second feed, giving her some hay, giving her some alfalfa, and letting her know, okay, this is our second meetup. And so when I start milking twice a day, she will already be there waiting on me at that time. Uh, your dairy cow, as I was saying, is very tooky about her schedule. You can operate within a 15-minute window. Now, what do I mean by that? I always head out to the barn around 645 and start milking by 7. Now, if I had to, I could go to the barn around 630 and start milking at 7. You see, that's a 15-minute difference there. Or I could head out at 7 and start milking at 7.15. That's 15 minutes later. If you have to change her time, do it in 15-minute increments. I have a friend who had a cow that, for some reason, the person they brought the cow from had been milking her at 11 o'clock at night. And they didn't want to do that. They wanted to just start milking her around 7.00. And she just went out to the barn and thought she would take the cow in there and start milking the cow. And that cow ran her all over the pasture. So she had to back up and actually start bringing the cow in 15-minute increments until she got her. And it took her a couple of months to get her to the 7 o'clock window. They're just very uh, habitual animals. So you have to do things with them slowly. The same thing with her feed or her supplements. You can avoid stomach issues, bowel upset. If you just change things a quarter at a time, if you want to reduce her feed or you want to reduce a supplement or something like that or even increase it, do it a quarter at a time until 25% at a time until you get it to where you want it to be. Our goal is to do very little grain, if any, feeding. But dairy grass has to be very rich, very nutritious, and very high in calories. And the pasture, the dairy pasture, is still in the development stage here. 
So it's going to be another two to three years before we can get to the place where we don't supplement her with any kind of grain. Uh, at that point, we will feed her pumpkins, uh, forage, kale, and a few other things that we grow for her in addition to her hay and her grass. Now that's option one. Option two, which I think is probably the best option, and it's what we've done in the past, but it's not the setup here where we can do this. So we will get there one day, but option two, you shut the cow and the calf in the barn at night in separate stalls. The stalls are side by side, they can see one another, but the calf cannot nurse overnight. When you come in to milk the next morning, you'll milk a gallon or so, and then you leave the rest of the milk for the calf. You turn the cow and the calf out to pasture together, and then in the evening, seven or eight, around dusky dark, you bring them back in, put them in separate stalls, and the calf will learn, I have to nurse during the day. Because a lot of times a calf will sleep a lot during the day. He'll play. He's exploring everything. And he just doesn't take the time to eat. Mama's out grazing. But he will learn, I've got to eat when we go out of the barn. And I've got to eat before we come into the barn. So he will learn the routine. And then uh, that, that'll work really nicely for both of them. They won't, there won't be as much uh, separation anxiety. And she won't be as nervous. Option number three. Because the calf sleeps and plays during the day, you can do the opposite of option one. Instead of bringing her in in the morning to milk her once a day, you bring her in in the evening and you milk her. Then you, then you can put her back out to pasture with them. Now, of course, the calf will learn what's happening and he will nurse when he thinks you're going to take his milk. Now, I want to talk to you about your cow. You are your dairy cows first line of defense you've got to know your cow cows are a lot smarter than people give them credit for and a dairy cow is very very different from beef cattle you, you can't treat her like a beef cattle she will bond with the person who's milking her so whoever is responsible for the milking in, in our home it's me uh, it's hard to have time off or to be sick if possible, what we've done is my, my husband goes out with me uh, as often as he can so that he knows our routine and so that they're familiar with her and she's familiar with them. They get to feed her. She says, okay, this person feeds me so that if something does happen and I'm not able to be here, she will trust them to bring her to the barn. She takes herself to the barn. You have to take her out of the barn, but she will trust them. Because she will not let her milk down for just anybody. I, I think it's very funny because even now, uh, my husband will go in and he will start to try to milk her. And he can get a little bit. And she will just look at me. And then as soon as I touch her, the milk lets down and she just milks fine. So before you milk, it's important to assess your cow. When I bring her into the barn... Even when I'm putting her halter on her, I'm assessing her. Now, some of that may be my old nursing. I was a nurse for 24 years. Some of it may be that. You need to look at your cow. You need to know your cow. You're going to look at her eyes. You're going to look at her nose. You're going to look at her true hips. You're going to especially assess her udder and her teeth. Some people call the udder the bag, and I do that interchangeably. So you're going to check her udder and her teeth for cuts. Scrapes, lumps, discoloration. Uh, FP has started biting her, so I'm having to treat some bites. He's getting his teeth in. You're going to check that. Uh, you're going to have to treat anything, anything that shouldn't be there. You're going to have to treat them. L any lumps or swelling, redness, heat, or discharge, that's a big concern. That's mastitis, probably. And you're going to have to do a mastitis test on the milk. It can set up in a matter of hours. So you constantly, even when I'm out in the pasture and she comes up to me, I'm looking at her. We're very careful with our milk cows. But I've had, I have friends who say that they did everything right and they still got mastitis. It's a real problem. I can't just say, oh, you know, I grew up milking cows and we've always had milk animals and I don't have to worry about that. No, you have to check your cow. You want to know her at the first sign of trouble you're the one who's going to see it. 
Now, I said assess her eyes. If her eyes are sunken, she has some illness in her body somewhere. So you want to look for other signs to see if you can figure out what's going on. If she's just freshened, if she's just had a calf, it can be a sign of a retained placenta. Her nose drainage should be clear. Her nose should be moist and slimy. Now, her true hips, those are those bones that stick out at the back. You want between that hip and her rib cage to be round and full. Her ribs should not be visible. If you see them, then she's not getting some nutrition that she needs. So you're going to have to increase her hay, her feed, give her some alfalfa. Um, it depends a lot on whether uh, what she's grazing on. Now, to milk a cow, here is my process. I've already said I bring her in and I've assessed her. So I brush her udder. I brush the udder to remove loose hair and dirt and as a way of assessing it. Then I wash her teats and the area around the bag and around each teat with warm water. The warm water, I find, warms my hands for one, but it also helps her milk come down. And she seems to really appreciate the warm water. Some people dip the teats in farm iodine. And sometimes I do this. If she's got cuts or something, I do that. Uh, but as a general rule, I only dip her teeth if she has uh, a cut or a scrape or something, and I do that after I milk. But if it's something you grew up doing that you want to do, you go ahead. If you do dip your teeth in farm iodine, then you wash it off with warm water before you milk, of course. The first thing you do when you want to uh, start milking, I use a fine mesh strainer, and I milk each teeth twice into that. That's two streams from each teeth. I look for clumps or discoloration in that milk. If I see any, then I've got to perform a mastitis check. And like I said, I've never had it, but it's still my habit. It's still routine to run that first little bit of milk through that strainer because it's just a first line of defense for her and for us. You don't want to drink that. Most, most of the time, I milk into a stainless steel bucket, and then I pour it into a strainer before I leave the barn. However, this year has been an extremely bad year for flies for us and it, i've never seen it like this before and so buttercup has been very irritated when she comes in so i spray her with a natural fly repellent before i milk her but she still kicks quite a bit at the flies um, she kicks out of irritation she's just been very frustrated so i've lost a couple of buckets of milk half a buckets of milk so i switched to a quart a sterilized quart mason jar we use wide mouth jars so i i have those so then i milk into that jar and i pour it to the strainer when it's full also gives me a better idea of how much milk i'm getting now once i'm done milking i wash her teats again and then i dry them water is you know, will dehydrate the skin if you decide it evaporates so i just pat her dry then i put a small amount of uh, utter cream that we make Right now, I'm just using Expeller Pressed Extra Virgin Coconut Oil. I put that in the palm of my hand, and I melt it in the winter. I add some other things to that to make it a little thicker, and then I massage it in. And I know she people say she's spoiled because I do that, but her teeth health is important to her and to us. So it's just something I do to help her. You know, in the winter, uh, it's especially important because she'll get chapped teats she may be exposed to wind cold or snow and so it's just better to go ahead and get in the habit of doing that then i turn her back out to pasture uh, with fp and the other cow that's with them they're set they're in a separate pasture from the rest of the herd cows are herd animals so we have one of the beef heifers or a yearling bull is kept over here with her so that her herd needs are met you know you would think she and her calf would make a herd but that's not how their minds work so just that third uh, animal being over here with them, they graze better, her mental condition is better. And so the healthier the cow, mentally, physically, emotionally, the healthier the milk. So we do everything we can to be sure her needs are met. If it's hot outside, your cow will not produce as much milk. Weather changes can cause a decrease in production and stress of any kind. Uh, a sudden change in feed or, or milking habits will decrease her milk production. Next month, we're hopefully going to breed her for a July birth. Um, well, we wanted to. <laughs> it looks like uh, it's going to be even later. So 
why we do that is we prefer a May June birth, but she gave birth in July this year, July the twenty eighth. So um, we didn't get to breed her like we wanted to. So we do the May June birth. We like that because that's when the deer in our area are uh, birthing out. The calves that we have that are born in that time frame, May and June. They don't seem to have as many health issues. The flies aren't real bad yet. The weather's just right. So, you know, the best laid plans, right? So, in a recap of what we've been talking about, uh, what is once a day milking? It's exactly what it sounds like. Milking once a day instead of the traditional way of twice. Here, we try to do everything in rhythm with nature. And that means letting the calf have everything it needs, at least for the first four or five months. She gives us three to four gallons of milk a day. We don't need all that, so the calf gets that. And then we wean it five or six months of age. Um, once the calf is weaned, you will have to milk twice a day. Only a very experienced dairy maid or dairyman can milk a cow once a day continuously without harming the cow. So why would you want to do once a day milking? There's a few reasons. It's healthier for the calf. They're not getting formula. Um, it's They're getting all the colostrum and all the antibodies from the mother. You can't use three to four gallons of milk. If you don't, unless you have a large family, uh, you couldn't use that much milk in a day. Uh, and you don't have to milk twice, you don't have the time to milk twice a day. The first couple of weeks, the calf will drink a half a gallon to a gallon a day, just depending on its breed. And then as it grows and gets older, it will drink more and more. Let's talk about our options for once a day milking. You're going to allow the calf, for at least for the first two weeks, complete access. You don't touch her unless her milk comes in. If it's her second calf or later, she's had more calves than one, then her milk's gonna come in earlier. And you may have to start milking her once a day at 10 days or so. Option one is what we're doing right now because of our current setup. You just leave the cow and the calf together 24 seven. First thing in the morning, uh, six, seven o'clock, I usually take her in around seven, you bring the cow into the barn for milking. You feed her, you milk her, and this works if you don't need a lot of milk. Option two is probably the best way. You shut them in the barn in stalls, separate stalls that are side by side where they can see one another, smell one another. This way the calf can't nurse overnight. Then first thing in the morning, you go into the barn and you milk her. You take about a gallon from her and then you give the calf the rest. Once you've milked her, then you turn the cow and the calf out in the pasture together for the rest of the day. Then in the evening, uh, seven, eight o'clock, close to sundown, you bring the cow and the calf into the barn and shut them away in their separate stalls. Now option three is the opposite of option one. The calf during the day will sleep a lot. He's exploring, so he doesn't nurse as much during the day. So you would bring her into the barn earlier in the evening to milk her. Now I will tell you, the calf will learn your rhythm and he will learn when you're going to shut them up and when he's not gonna be without milk and when you're gonna milk her. And he will start nursing her to get all the milk he can. So shutting him away at night is a good idea. There will be a lot of bellowing. There will be a lot of crying when they're separated, but the, they will learn the routine and they'll settle back into it. The rhythm's the same. You feed her, you milk her, and then you put her back out to pasture with the calf. Remember, you are your dairy cow's first defense. You want to assess her every time you milk her. You wanna look for cuts, lumps on her udder, anything that is out of the ordinary. You want to assess her eyes, her nose, her hips, and her knees as well. Her eyes should not be sunken. That's a sign of illness in her body somewhere. Her nose should be moist and any drainage that she has should be clear. Her hips should be full and you should not be able to see her ribs. Now, if you see buttercup, you see her hip bones, that's natural. That's the way God made their hips. But between her hips and her ribs is full, and that's what you want it to be. Her knees should not be swollen or tender when you touch them. Her feet should not be swollen, bleeding, cut, or draining. 
as you've heard me say probably on the farmer's lamp in some of our videos assess their poop poop tells you a lot about the health of an animal you know the traditional cow pile well that's what you want it to be dairy cows are not like beef cattle and they cannot be treated as such they require special attention mastitis can set in quickly so every day you assess for mastitis that swollen teats red teats i hope you've learned something about once a day milking or milking in general i know i'm always learning as papa said my papa said there's as many ways of getting a farm chore done as there are farmers. Remember at the Farmer's Lamp, we're here to help. Hi, I'm Rhonda Crank, and this is Buttercup. She's an A2A2 Jersey milk cow, and if you're not familiar with A1 or A2 milk, you can learn more about that on the farmer's lamp. <laughs> they go to work. <laughs> Your calf will learn, like I said, the calf. <laughs> Okay, so we've, why would you want to do once a day milking? There's a three, there's probably a lot of written. <laughs> now let's talk about the options for practicing once a day milking. Um, <laughs> We'd love to have you join us at www.thefarmerslamp.com. You can find us on Facebook, follow us on Pinterest, and subscribe to us on YouTube. You can visit our country store on the website and get your free subscription to Homesteading Today magazine featuring some of your favorite homestead bloggers. As always, we're here to help. Safe and happy journey.